What is going on everybody? I go by the name of Curry and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. It's been a long time since we've done the tax video where I told you guys that horrible story about how I got sued by the IRS for over $30,000 and since then a lot of you guys have been asking me for advice about how to set up your own small business, how to do your own taxes, what the tax form means. I understand a lot of you guys are brand new resellers in the game. You guys have made some money off of sneakers and now you guys are hearing all this talk about taxes and you guys want to make sure that you don't get in trouble. Well, today I'm here to walk you guys through how to set up your business, formalize things for yourself, give yourself a little bit more of a competitive advantage out here in the resale game, and hopefully make sure that you're straight with Uncle Sam and with your taxes as well so you don't make some of the mistakes that I made. Now, before I get started, I also want to let you guys know I'm not a CPA, I'm not a professional, I'm not a tax professional. So apparently you have to give that little disclaimer that I am not at liberty to give you guys legally binding financial advice. So please do not say that Kari said for you to do something, that's not gonna hold up in a court of law very well. So I'm not a professional. Everything that I'm doing here is a suggestion. Now that I've said that, Let's get into it. Now, also, this advice can go for any small business that you may want to open up because a lot of the advice, especially when we start talking about taxes, it's going to pretty much equate to any small business that you want to open up, especially if you're doing something that involves a lot of buying and selling like a resale business. And that goes for Amazon sellers, eBay sellers, if you're in sneakers, if you're in trading cards, whatever it is, a lot of the information that I share with you guys today, it's really going to be able to pretty much translate across the board. But of course, since this is primarily a sneaker channel, we're going to look at things from the perspective of a sneaker seller who wants to take their business to the next level. Let's just say you're selling a bunch of sneakers out here, you got a bunch of stuff that's for sale and you're starting to make some pretty good money. Say you start off small time, selling a pair here, selling a pair there, but you've been able to make more money, you've been able to do a lot more things with your sneakers out here. And now that the year is ending, you have to decide first of all, whether or not you even have to pay taxes. And if you do have to pay taxes, how you do it the right way. So let me break it all the way down from the beginning. We're gonna go through this thing step by step and I'm gonna try not to take too much of you guys time today. Now, the first thing that I hear from a lot of people is, do you have to be a certain age before you even have to file your taxes? I've had a lot of people come to me and they've said, hey man, look, I'm not even 18 yet, so I shouldn't have to file any taxes, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not right. Even if you're not 18 years old yet, even if you are young enough to be claimed as somebody's dependent on their taxes, you could still be liable depending on how much money you made. And that has to do with what's called earned income and unearned income. Now for today, just to make it simple, I'm just going to talk about earned income. And that really is literally money that you work for. If the money that you earn, even if you're under the age of 18, is more than what the standard deduction would be, say if your parent tried to claim you on their taxes, you have to claim that or your parents can claim that for you on their taxes as well. Okay, Kari, you already lost me. What in the world does that mean? What's a standard deduction? What are you talking about? Let me break it down a little bit simpler. If you sold enough sneakers, for instance, that you made more than $12,400, that's what we call the standard deduction, then you are liable to pay taxes on that money that you made and you have to report it to the government. Now, if you made less than $12,400, say selling sneakers, you don't really have to worry about it. But if you're one of these people that I've seen at SneakerCon that's making a lot more than $12,000 selling shoes, you do have to claim that and somebody has to pay taxes on that money that's being made. Now, how do you claim that? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's just go through the motions of if you're over the age of 18 and you wanna formally make your sneaker resale business a real thing, a real business out here, how do you go about doing that? I'm gonna tell you guys the simplest way to do it. This is probably gonna sound like an ad at this point, but I promise you guys it's not. But personally, the way that I set up my business is LegalZoom. LegalZoom is one of a few different types of services online that really streamlines your ability to set up an LLC. Now, what in the world is an LLC? An LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. And basically what that means is it's setting up a formal business entity with your state that establishes this business, the name of this business, and you as connected. You're the owner of this business. You have created this business that is recognized by your state as a full-fledged, fully operating business, just like any other business in the entire state. Now you need to establish your business if you want a lot of the perks of owning your own business. In a lot of ways, you're gonna need to set yourself up as an LLC anyway. Now, why would you need to sell up an LLC? Aren't there different types of businesses? I'm glad you asked that. The answer is yes, there are a lot of different types of businesses, but I'm gonna keep it very simple for you guys today and just tell you guys the reason why you want to sign up as an LLC is because again, limited liability means that you are not
not liable if somebody wants to come to you or if your business incurs debts, you personally are not liable. Now, what you may hear is something called a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship basically is an LLC with no paperwork. Now, what that means is that there's no differentiation between you as a person, John Doe, or your business. So if somebody wants to sue you, they can come directly after you and your assets and your credit and all of the things that you personally own. However, if you have an LLC and somebody has a problem with your business, your business can get sued, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your personal assets are going to be affected by that. So having an LLC protects you. It protects your business. It protects your assets and it protects you as an individual from not getting railroaded if something happens that falls by the wayside, things go bad. So do yourself a favor, set yourself up as an LLC. Now there's other stuff out here. People are going to talk about S corps and all this other type of stuff. You're just starting out. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Go on LegalZoom, set yourself up as an LLC. I'm going to give you guys another tip. When you set yourself up as an LLC, do the bare minimum that you have to do. It should only cost you maybe about $100 to set it up and to do everything you need to do through LegalZoom. They're going to have a bunch of extra bells and whistles that are going to confuse you because they confuse me, but I'm here to tell you guys a lot of that stuff you don't need. You don't need all these preparers and people to talk on the phone and a Dun and Bradstreet number and all this stuff. You don't need any of that. I'm also going to give you guys another tip here. Now, there's another number that they're going to want you to have that you're legally obligated to have, especially if you plan on bringing on employees and that's what's known as an EIN. That's an employer identification number. Now, LegalZoom is going to offer to actually provide you an EIN if you want to as well. But I'm going to tell you guys, here's a shortcut. Don't go through LegalZoom because you can get an EIN in about five minutes from the IRS directly for free 99. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link down in the description box for the IRS website where you can get an EIN from. It literally takes like two seconds. You go on there, you put the name of your business, They'll spit you out an EIN, you save that, and you're done. You're good. You don't have to worry about it. LegalZoom is going to charge you like 30 or 50 or like $100 or something crazy like that. That's a finesse. Don't worry about that. Don't get an EIN through them. Now, the other reason why you're going to want to get this paperwork formalized is so that you can set yourself up a business bank account. Now, that's the second thing that you guys really need to do once you get your paperwork back. So once all this is all formalized, they're going to take care of everything for you. They're going to send all the right things to the right places in the state. There is a way that you can do it yourself, but I'm going to tell you guys, personally, I just like things to be clean and convenient, even if it costs just a little bit more bread. There is a way that you probably can do it through your state, through like the probate judge or something, and you can go to like your local courthouse or something and set up a formation, but don't do all that. Don't worry about the hassle. Personally, I would just go straight through LegalZoom, do it fast through them, and just get it done. So as I mentioned, the next thing that you want to do is set yourself up with a business bank account. Now, you guys, banks are all different. Wherever you live at, it is what it is. But I'm going to tell you guys, personally, I set up my business bank account through my local credit union. Now, locally here where I live, it's a bank called Redstone. But wherever you guys live, if you have the ability to go to a credit union as opposed to going to a traditional bank, I would highly suggest you set up your business bank account through a local credit union. I think credit unions are dope because they're locally owned, they're member owned, and a lot of times they tend to offer way better rates on things like loans if you want to do that in the future sometimes mortgages if you want to buy a house in the future and stuff like that. So I would go through a credit union if it's possible, but if it's not possible, do what you got to do. Now, when you go into the bank, you cannot open up a business bank account without your formation paperwork. So again, that's why it's so important for you to do your formation paperwork first, get all the right papers that you're going to need, get your EIN number, because you're also going to need to provide that as well if you're an LLC to your bank. Once you get that paperwork together, it'll be easy breezy. They'll set you up with a business bank account. Now you have something that you can formally use to track all of your business expenditures outside of your personal expenditures. So now you have your personal bank account and your business bank account. It'll come with its own business debit card. You can get a credit card through that account, whatever you want to do. And that's super, super important, guys. As early on as humanly possible, separate your money, separate your personal bread from your business bread. I'm trying to help you guys out here because I did not do that. Learn from my mistakes. Save yourself a lot of headache trying to go through all your bank accounts and settle up everything. Don't do that to yourself. Make it easy. Set up a separate business account separate from your personal account. Okay, so you got your 
business set up formally. You got your legal Zoom stuff done. Bam. Then you got your business bank account set up. You got a business debit card. Boom. So now throughout the year, you're buying all of your sneakers and you're doing it strictly through your business bank account. So it's super easy to track all of your expenses and everything like that. So the year comes to a close. April, whatever comes around. I think it's the 15th. That's the deadline. But if you're like me, you extended. So I extended my taxes this year, full transparency. So now you have until I believe October the 15th to do your taxes. So it's time to do your taxes. What do we do? First thing that you want to do is you want to gather up all of your tax documents. Now, there are a lot of different tax documents that exist out there. Obviously, if you guys are working, you know, a lot of those get mailed directly to you or they get emailed to you or you can pull them somewhere like for your job. You have your W-2, for instance. Now, the beautiful thing about having an LLC, especially if you're a single member LLC or if you're a sole proprietorship, is that you can actually include your business taxes with your personal taxes. And so for a lot of you guys that are just starting out, this is kind of a beginner video, kind of a 101 on taxes. You're probably going to fall into this category where you can just file everything in with your personal stuff. So you're going to gather up your W-2s, 1099s, and we'll talk about 1099s in just a second, but any of your tax documents, that's number one. Now, speaking of 1099s, there's different types of 1099s that you guys are going to have. Now, the main one that you guys are probably going to be concerned about is a 1099K. If you guys remember from my tax video, that was the one that I got from PayPal that actually went through month by month how much money I made selling sneakers and had a total for the end of the year of how much money I made through PayPal. Now, there's other 1099s. Like, for instance, you guys may see me doing eBay campaigns or certain brand campaigns. Those 1099s are from me actually being a contractor or contracted employee of eBay or Foot Action or Foot Locker or whatever like that. Those I also have to file in under my business taxes for Sneaker Fetish because Sneaker Fetish actually is established as a business. So I did LLC Sneaker Fetish so that I could do all the work that I do plus get paid by YouTube. So 1099s really differ depending on what you're doing out here. But primarily your 1099 is gonna come from the money that you brought in using things like PayPal. Now, the way that you're taking money for your shoes that's on you. And I'm just gonna say, if you're exchanging cash hand to hand, and if you're doing things that aren't really tracked digitally so that you're not really printed off a 1099, that's on you. But I'm really talking to you guys, if you wanna establish a business legally and grow and scale your business, maybe go brick and mortar one day, get access to things like capital and business loans so that you can grow your business or grow your store, this is the way that you wanna do it. You might wanna formalize the way that you're taking your payments, go straight through PayPal. Actually going through PayPal helps as well because just so you guys know, if you go through like Square or PayPal, the more sales that you do through those channels, you can actually unlock working capital, which is basically a loan that you can get directly through PayPal or Square or payment processors like that, that gives you working capital that you can use to go out and buy even more stuff. So it's to your benefit if you can formalize these businesses through a PayPal, trust me. Okay, so we've set up our legal Zoom business paperwork so the business is formalized. You got your business bank account where you can track all of your expenses and everything that you've been spending on money, everything like that, fantastic. You've also started getting all of your W-2s and your 1099s together to start doing your taxes, fantastic. Here's what's next. You gotta choose which deduction you want. So remember I talked to you guys a little bit about that whole standard deduction situation, that $12,400. Well, basically what that means is if you don't think you can claim more than $12,400 in write-offs and deductions on your taxes, then you can take the standard deduction that automatically gives you $12,400 worth of deductions on your taxes. That's a freebie that you get from the IRS. Now I'm gonna tell you, depending on how many deductions we can find for your business, a lot of times it is to your benefit to go ahead and itemize your deductions and not take the standard deduction, but I'll get on that in just a minute. All right, next step, you gotta decide how you wanna file. So most of you guys, if you're unmarried, you're probably gonna just file single. If you are married, you'll do married filing joint or married filing together, whichever one you wanna do, or you can do head of household if you got kids. Now that's up to you. 
You can Google that information. I'm not gonna go super deep into that because most of you guys are probably just gonna be filing single. So you start to run through your taxes. Now your general tax return is pretty easy. You guys can probably do that with a tax professional. I would highly suggest you guys run through a lot of this stuff with a tax professional anyway. I actually have some really good tips from my personal accountant. He has a master of accountancy. I'm gonna share that with you guys kind of towards the end of the video. But if you have somebody that can do your taxes with you or for you, do that because there are people that do this for a living that can find a lot more deductions and things of that nature that you may not even know about. There's a whole tax code and that thing looks like a Bible. And there are people, CPAs and accountants that work all year long to find all the new breaks, tax breaks that you can get as a business owner and as an individual that can help you get the biggest refund. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? Not having to owe anything back on your taxes. And so the way that you do that is you offset the taxes that you owe to the government by the amount of deductions that you can deduct away from your tax liability. If you haven't been taking any notes on this video and you've just kind of been letting it play in the background, now might be the time that you might wanna grab a notebook and a pen because there's some information on here that's gonna be very important to you and your reselling business. When you go to file your business taxes, there is a form that's called a Schedule C that's going to be included. This is the exact form and what it looks like right here. This is the form that you're going to use to file taxes for your business and you're going to attach this form with your personal tax return. Don't let any of this stuff intimidate you. Trust me, you already have, if you've done this correctly, pretty much all of the information that you're going to need to fill out this Schedule C here. So it starts at the top here. They just want the name of your business. They want the business address that might be your own home. If it's your home where you operate your business, fantastic. If you got a brick and mortar, fantastic. Whatever your address is, go ahead and put that down. Now, there's gonna be other stuff on here like accounting method. I just put cash. They're gonna put, did you materially participate in the operation of business during 2020? Of course, you're gonna put yes. Did you work in your business? But I wanna hone in on part one, income, and part two, expenses. What does income include? What do expenses include? Let's dig into that just a little bit. Now your income, that's exactly what it sounds like. It's how much money did you make? How much money did you bring in? Now what's really dope is that I don't know if you guys are one of those types of resellers that are pounding the pavement out here and just exchanging a lot of cash. If you are one of those types of people, you may not even be claiming taxes on your business unless you really wanna do that. That's up to you. However, if you are one of these other types of sellers out here that's taking payments through PayPal and say PayPal gives you a 1099, or Square gives you a 1099, you actually have these tax forms, they're going to pretty much do the work for you of how much income you made. They're gonna itemize it and they're gonna make sure that everything is very easy to read. Not only that, but if you're selling on platforms such as StockX or Goat, there's something that they actually give to you at the end of the year where you can just tally up everything and it's very easy to read. This is what one of those reports looks like from StockX that they give to you whenever you're getting ready to do your taxes. Now I printed this out when it was time for me to do my taxes. Now, what this provides is the name of the product you sold, the date you sold it, how much you sold it for, and then there's kind of a gross amount and a net amount. Now, a net amount is the final amount that you made after fees. Now, that's important. What I was doing when I was doing my taxes and part of what I did when I was kind of reconciling my taxes when I got hit with that bill was I got something like this and then I would take the gross amount and the net amount and I would subtract the net amount from the gross and that would give me how many fees that I paid. You can claim those fees as a deduction on your taxes. And what's dope about that, obviously, is the higher the sales price, the higher the fees that you're paying the stock eggs. Every last one of those fees, you can claim that as a deduction, and I would suggest that you do so. So you tally all of that up, and that is your income. Again, anything that you got for income. For me, that might be work that I did with campaigns and all these other type things, but whatever it is, if you're selling shoes, if you're an influencer, I still hate that word, but whatever it is that you're doing, that all goes under your income. Now, there's a line within that income that's called gross profit and gross income, and basically, that takes into consideration something called cost of goods sold. We're gonna talk a little bit about that while we roll into expenses. Now, again, get your notebooks because this is really, really important. This is gonna save you a lot of money. When you think about expenses as a reseller, you really have to expand what expenses means. And in some cases, 
get creative with it as well. So to me, there's kind of three kinds of resellers right now. There's the resellers that are pounding the pavement that really don't sell on StockX and GOAT and stuff like that. There's the resellers that sell more so on StockX and GOAT and do more digital stuff online. And then there are the guys that are on the road, the resellers that are going to sneaker cons and sneaker exits and all these other shows and all these different cities. And you go from state to state, city to city. Now let's break down what some typical expenses might be for each one of those types of sellers. For the guy that's pounding the pavement, your expenses are not just what you're paying for the actual sneakers themselves, but it might be gas in your car. It might be food that you eat when you're out doing a business trip, which is maybe going to the mall to buy up inventory for your business. It's really pretty much anything that you had to spend money on while you were in the act of doing something for your business. Now, it gets a little more complicated when you're one of the guys that are online and say you're botting. Say for instance, you're a botter. Botting is a perfect way to actually explain startup expenses for your business. Now, one of the things that you can claim as a deduction is the actual startup to get your business established in the first place. So like when I talked about setting up LegalZoom and paying the 100 bucks or whatever the case is, you can claim every dime that you spent to do that paperwork as a deduction to get a credit back on that from the government when it's time to do your taxes. But you may actually have other startup fees that had to do with you being able to run your business at home, say if you're a botter, whatever you paid for your bot, that's what's known as startup costs, so you can claim that as a deduction. Now, other expenses that are in this category, they kind of lay them all out for you. Advertising is a big one. If you guys are advertising, say you're doing a paid ad on Facebook, or Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Say you're paying maybe somebody to talk about your business for you. Say you paid an influencer to talk about your business for you. Or for instance, all of those proxy companies that Better Boy Nova is talking about on all of his videos. And I know you guys watch a lot of his videos. He's a botter on here. So a lot of those companies, that's advertising dollars that they're using to pay him to talk about how good their product is on its video. So if you guys are doing anything like that, any advertising to get the word out about your business, business cards that you're printing up, things like that, claim those as expenses. That's important. That also takes me to the sellers that go from state to state and city to city. All of your table fees that you're paying to go to all of these events, those are deductions. If you got a big banner that you're using or all those shelvings that you're using in the tablecloths and all that other stuff that you're buying, those are all expenses that I hope you guys are taking track of, you guys are deducting. Now, a lot of things under expenses, you guys probably aren't gonna really be worried about like insurance or mortgage or anything like that. Now, there is a space for expenses for legal and professional fees as well. Now, again, you're gonna have to probably pay if you have somebody to do your taxes for you, but it's worth the money because say for instance, somebody that does your taxes for you costs you $200, but if they found you more than $200 worth of deductions that you didn't find on your own, you've already made that money back. Traveling meals, again, just like I told you guys, if you're going from state to state, city to city, every single thing that you eat when you're going from state to state and city to city for sneakers, you need to be claiming as deductions. So keep your receipts. A lot of times we get stuff digitally nowadays. Find a way that you can keep up with your receipts digitally so you can track how much money you're spending on every dollar that you're spending when you're going out of town on these trips. And your biggest expense, of course, that you're gonna be deducting are the prices that you're paying for the shoes that you're buying. That's what's known as cost of goods sold. How much did it cost you to purchase the goods that you're selling? Now, there's a few ways that you can do this. Now, for me, I tend to go the old school route and I keep my receipts. Every one of these binders is a year's worth of receipts that I would keep over the years when I was selling all of my shoes really, really heavy. Remember I told you guys, I was very heavy in the resale game. So every one of these binders is packed full year after year after year with not only all of the sneakers that I was buying, but the shipping expenses as well. So UPS receipts, United States Post Office receipts, packaging, I use Uline, which is a great service if you guys wanna use that in order to get shipping supplies like boxes. I'm tired of seeing you guys using them half cut in half Home Depot boxes. I need you guys to go on Uline, get those boxes, all of those receipts for everything that's in every one of these binders. But you guys may not wanna go that route and that's fine. However, you can track how much money you were spending for your shoes, if it was retail or if it was resell, 
make sure you're keeping track with that because that's going to be your big ticket right there for your biggest deduction. Now, if you made a profit on a sneaker, you owe taxes on that profit and taxes vary. So again, the big thing about if you're making profits, big profits on your sneakers, you're either going to have to pay taxes on them or you're going to have to find enough deductions to offset the profits that you made. So if you're making a lot of profits, if you're selling a lot of sneakers and you're making huge profits on the shoes, fantastic. That's good for you, which means you're either going to have to pay your uncle Sam all the taxes that you owe him back for all those sneaker profits, or you're going to have to find enough deductions to offset the taxes that you would have had to pay based on the profits that you made. So in some instances, it's to your benefit to take a loss every now and again, because every loss you can claim that on your taxes. So I'm not saying that you want to take losses. Obviously, you don't want to do that. But don't be afraid to take losses on sneakers, because if you're doing all of your due diligence to keep up with your paperwork and file your taxes correctly, you can always make it up at the end of the year while claiming losses on the business. Now, as I mentioned, a really good friend of mine, I'll link his information down below. He's a master of accounting and he actually is an accountant as well. He works for himself. He gave me some really good tips to share along with you guys. So this information isn't coming from Kari. This is coming from a real deal accountant. Number one, understand what you do and don't know. Know the difference between profit and revenue. So let me go back one more time so that you guys understand what's going on. Say for instance, you purchased the Air Jordan 13 Flint for $200. That $200 is the cost of the good sold. So that's your cost of goods sold. Say you sell this sneaker for $250. $250 is your gross revenue. Revenue is literally how much money you sold something for, whatever that number is. The difference between what you paid and what you sold it for, of course, is your profit. So you have a revenue of $250, but you have a profit of $50. Your tax liability would mean that you owe X percentage on $50, which is your profit. You only pay taxes on profit, not on revenues. Number two tip for the master of accounting, keep all of your receipts for anything that pertains to the business. A digital filing system works very well. So there are even apps out here where you can take a picture of your receipt and it'll automatically file it for you. So it should be really simple to keep up with your receipts. You guys don't have to have big binders like I do full of receipts. You don't have to have that, but it is important to keep up with your receipts just in case. He talks about opening up a bank account. We've already been through that. He also talks about don't use your business account for any personal expenditures, guys. That's important. Don't dip into that money to pay something else on the personal side that you need to take care of. Designate and be disciplined enough to use that money only for business purposes. That's very, very important. He also mentions using something like QuickBooks, which does work well, especially if you're an up and coming business. I personally don't use QuickBooks, but that is a really good service and software to use if you want to also keep track of your transactions. But again, with the reporting that's with the reporting that's available through like StockX and Go, you don't have to do that. But it is good just to find some kind of a way at the end of the day to keep all of your stuff organized. And then finally, just educate yourself as best as you can. Seek out a professional. They don't have to have all of these certain information. They don't have to necessarily be a CPA, but it is important that they have enough skin in the game when it comes to accounting and taxes that they know what they're talking about and they know how to help you out. There's a lot of snake oil salesmen out here that say that they're good with taxes, but they're not doing anything more for you, honestly, than you could do for yourself. So be careful with that. And guys, listen, that's pretty much it. That's kind of the beginner's guide of how to set up your business for yourself, get off the ground, get up and running and to make sure that you're protecting yourself when it's tax time. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about this little guide here. Hopefully you guys will reference this back as you're establishing your businesses. Feel free to ask me any questions either here or on any of my social medias. The name is the same. It's Sneaker Fetish and I'll be more than happy to chop it up with you guys or answer any other questions or get you in contact with somebody that can help you with those questions from a legal perspective. Because again, I'm not that guy. Happy hunting, happy buying, happy selling. I want to see you guys grow out here. This video was kind of more for the resellers, but again, if you have any kind of small business that you're looking to open up, be smart about it. Just whatever you're doing, have fun, but be smart about it and cover yourself to make sure that you're not hit with a $34,000 tax bill. While you guys are down in the comments, of course, be sure to click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure that you don't miss out on any more information or any more heat that comes to the channel because i guarantee you guys i got some stuff in transit that's gonna blow you away stay tuned as always i want to thank you guys for joining me here on sneaker fetish taking a look at all of these documents with me and a couple of shoes with me i go by the name of kari this is all the information that you need to know to set up your small business set up an llc and to get your taxes straight and until next time i'm out